So Bettina, why don't you, for people who don't know who you are, just tell a little bit about what you do and what you're all about. Yeah. So I am, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm a lot of things. I do lots of different um, types of work, but I'm predominantly a filmmaker and I teach filmmaking. Um, I'm a writer and a, a screenwriter. I also write different kinds of things as well, from theory to um, journalism and also like poetry and things like that. Um, and I also, uh, I teach filmmaking to teenagers in Philadelphia, which is something that is, is a lot of fun, um, chasing around these ideas that teenagers have and trying to make them reality. Um, and I've also taught uh, different filmmaking classes on reservations in the United States and Canada, which is something that I really like doing. Um, and I, I, that's, that's a project that I'd like to expand actually is going into different communities and doing uh, film, filmmaking workshops, just something that's, that, that's quick in a week and then generate a film. Uh, that's a lot of fun. So, and I also work in journalism. That's, that's a, new, a new kind of development where I'm producing two television news programs in Philadelphia. And so even though you do a lot of directing, a lot of writing, you know, you do a lot of teaching. And I've been a teacher too in ballet for many years. And I don't know, correct me if I'm wrong, but um, for me at least, I've learned so much more about the craft teaching it than actually doing it. Yeah, I mean, I think it's a little of, I think it's a little of both. I think that what happens with teaching is that you get into this space that's, um, it's very it's very experimental it's very open mm -hmm. and that is really exciting right like there's not there's not a lot of ego in that process and when the ego goes to the side then you're really learning and you're really exploring new ideas and new techniques um the other thing with teaching is that we don't really have a lot of money for these programs so it's very different from walking onto like a big set with a lot of professionals and a lot of money and a lot of training and things are sort of moving um, in a way that is, that is predictable, right? Like there's, there's this kind of process in place. Whereas when you're teaching and you're out in the middle of the land or you're, you, you just don't have the equipment that you need to sort of make it look like you are landing on the moon, you know, which is a, a film that we made in, the Paiute res out in Vegas, um, then you just, you just invent, right? And there's this beautiful freeing quality to just having people come up with outlandish ideas and then being like, well, there's always cardboard, right? We, we can make it out of cardboard, right? Yeah. And then you just kind of get into this beautiful creative space. And I, I, like, um, I like making films that way. I like, I like collaborating with people who have that kind of attitude. I mean, don't get me wrong. I like walking onto a big set and seeing that whole big machine yeah. hum. You know, That's it's always beautiful. fun. That's always fun to do. I always love that. Yeah, yeah. But there is like... I guess there's this inventiveness, this openness that happens in those in those moments where you don't have the resources um, that I that I really enjoy, and I absolutely learn a lot from that. Yeah, that's great. Um, and you know, there's something to be said that it doesn't matter the production quality. It's the it it it's or or, or how how many dollars you should I should say that goes into a project. It's about the writing, the substance, what you're saying, and the story you're trying to convey, you know? Because yeah. I, th I think you've seen a few, like e even smartphones now, like, uh, sure. you know, we're shooting on 4K and 1080p on a smartphone um, that was better than what people were using in the 80s and 90s and the early 2000s for, you know, high level production value in the palm mm -hmm. of your hand literally so it, it you know a lot of people try to say oh I need the best gear it's still storytelling and you can make that happen with what gear you got yeah yeah a hundred percent yeah I mean it's a synthesis of a lot of different elements right and I think that when you concentrate too heavily on one aspect of it the other things are going to fall to the side right so the, it has to be a synthesis of of the technology, but the idea has to be there. The performances have to be there. The desire has to be there, right? Like, cause you, there's, there's one thing to, um, to sort of like 
I want to be a filmmaker. I want to be a writer. And then there's the work that goes into actually doing it, you know? So all of these, it's a, it's a synthesis of all those things. And then finding people who are, you know, filmmaking is, it's, it's a collaborative art. So you have to surround yourself. You have to build a team with people who are as excited about it as you are and as committed to it as you are, right? Because you can solve problems. Um, you, you know, you don't need to dump money into something to make it the best, right? That doesn't solve the problem, right? Yeah. It's this sort of, it's this attitude, it's this pursuit, it's this desire, um, this sort of shared vision that I think really makes things happen. And it really takes a village in order to make a story happen in this. So going to that, all right. So um, I know you've done had have you've done this process a lot. What is the making of a film like? Because I'm sure that that's very mystifying to many people. Yeah, I know it's very broad, um, but like, how would you describe <laughs> even like that? Yeah. Um, the process of making a film. I think, (laughs) I mean, I think it's a series of steps really, you know, the, um, it begins with, with an idea, right? Mm -hmm. And, um, then I'm, I'm a very big proponent of sort of like proper screenwriting. And by proper screenwriting, I don't mean like three act structure or blah, blah, blah. Right. I mean, I think people write in different ways, but, but I do think that you need to, you need to sit and write, right? You need to develop the characters, you need to develop the, the storyline, the places, the locations. And there's a, a lot of filmmaking is actually this process of um, honing down this world and the people in it, you know, or the characters in it. Um, and that's mostly what I, what I teach my students is that process, you know, because once that process is sort of is sort of set and that world is built in you know on the page um and through mood boards and things like that right because it's a visual it's it's a visual art then the other things kind of start to fall into place so that that is where i feel like you have to pour a lot of energy and a lot of work and it's very mysterious work you know i mean one of the things that i do with my students actually is that we write screenplays together so that we can understand what, um, what, what screenwriting is like, right? What this cinematic language is like on the page. Um, that, it's a skill. It's very different from writing a letter, from writing an email, from writing a novel. It's a, it's a very specific type of language, you know? Um, and, and then you, you build a team, right? That's, that's, that's the hardest thing, right? And I think that you have to, um, the, the number one lesson that I've learned is that you kind of have to be bold when you build your team. You just have to grab your friend who you realize like dresses really well and be like, hi, you're the costume designer, right? You're, you're going to figure out what the characters are going to wear. And then you have to go through this process of handing off, if you're the writer or the director, you need to be willing to like hand off pieces of your brain to other people and be like, I, I can't think about this anymore, you know? Um, that's definitely a mistake that I've made where I've, I've gone, like I've walked onto a project just doing way, way too much in terms of um, all of the moving parts. Because once you're actually shooting, so I mean, I, I work predominantly as a director. Once you're shooting, you're, the, the only thing that you need to worry about is getting those performances right getting those performances out of actors and that is very intimate work um and if you're being like oh gosh where's that shirt that this person is supposed to be wearing and i'm not really sure of this location that we're going to be at in an hour is going to be ready and i is lunch going to be here like you can't you know what i mean that that's going to keep you from from doing your work as a director um so you have to you know you have to build a team and then uh you have to you have to do it. That's the hardest thing, right? Like, it seems like the the two hardest things are figuring out how to begin, right? Which a lot of artists have written about that, like how to begin and then how to do, right? Because anyone can be like, oh, I'm I'm going to make a movie. I'm going to, you can talk about it all day, but it's the doing that's difficult, you know? So, so what you're saying is that all of it's hard. 
All of it is hard. <laughs> Just starting and doing it. Yes, all of it is hard. All of it is really, really hard work. A lot of the work is very isolating, right? Mm -hmm. Like I think, yeah. I think people get this sense that like, oh, I work in the film industry. It's like a lot of parties and stuff. Yeah, there's a lot, there are parties, but if you go to all the parties, you're not really doing the work. Like the work itself is very lonely work, yep. you know? What people don't understand is that a lot of people see it from the outside and they see the parties and the glitz and glamour. Okay, I'm like every, yeah. every weekend I'm at like three, four parties. I'm at this cast member's house. I'm at this producer's event. Those are just the tip of the iceberg. And it's that, that's only a portion of it. That's like the, 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 the self-marketing, the networking, the making the relationships part. Yeah. yeah but you don't see the the whole rest of the week where you know people are staying up to 3 a.m writing their screenplay or figuring out you know who's getting submiss submitted for casting like you don't see that part so yeah. um I, I i like to joke around it's amazing anybody in the industry gets any sleep um <laughs> and uh i you know even even to this day I see productions and I see all the amount of work and the amount of people and the amount of money. And it's amazing how anything gets done, but it really is a testament to willpower. You know, if you yeah. want to do it, it will get done. And I think that's one thing that I've learned in this, you know, if you want to do something, you can get it done. Yeah. Yeah. You just have to sit there and you have to do the work and you have to like, you have to love the work. I think, I mean, I, I love, I love every aspect of it. You know, I, I really love writing. Well, it shows. Um, I love research. Yeah. I mean, I, 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 I can get into research like heavy, right? I can just go in there and be in like, ah, oh, what kind of plant is this? <laughs> you know, like what kind of gun is that? And, oh, know, I know. Is this a, like, is this a I, service issue weapon for this particular conflict? Like all of that, you know? Um, I like that. And then there's the work that you, you know, you and I met as, as actors, mm -hmm. right? Uh, pursuing that work and um, you know I came to acting for like as as a director right as mm -hmm. like with like predominantly with the desire to learn how to um, communicate with actors right and to spend time around actors and sort of as um, as an investment in as an investment in the craft of directing right and but not necessarily thinking I, I am an actor, right? Um, which, which of course that has really turned around for me because through studying acting, I've discovered how beautiful it is, right? How exciting, how incredible it is and how difficult it is, right? How incredibly hard the work is. It's amazing, you know? I, th I think that that was the first thing that struck me when I met you because we met in acting class and I think for, for me, that's what made you stand out is that you were willing to find out that perspective. You were willing to take the time and dedicate your energy and resources to really find out what that process is like. Because I, I know firsthand a few directors who don't know how they come across to an actor, you know, um, and that could be no fault of their own. That could be just the way that they talk about it, how, what they expect and how they expect things to be done on set. You know, um, it's a very hard and complicated job where you have to be very vulnerable and susceptible to, you know, any type of criticism from, you know, everybody essentially. Um, but as, uh, on the flip side, having a very thick skin and and being comfortable and secure, being vulnerable, you know. So it's it, it's it's a very weird um, duality that actors have to do. And I just I just I just love that you know that passion and you know that 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 um, that struggle and what it takes. Yeah. Yeah. I I don't actually think that I. Um... I, I, that I would be a successful director, that I would be developing those skills if I didn't study acting. Mm. Um, I think that it would be very, it, it would be like a cerebral process, right? As opposed to just like a having lived, like lived the experience, you know? Um, 
I think you have to experience what it's like to be directed, right? That, 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 that thing of, you know, having this character of having this text and being sort of, and, and the motivation, understanding the motivation of the character and then having a director in this case, you know, an, an acting coach or something, just give you direction and you being like, I do not understand what you're saying. I don't understand what you want, right? There's a lot, this, this process of um, kind of a, an attempt at communication that just comes off as miscommunication, right? So understanding, understanding that, like putting yourself in that space has allowed me to develop a kind of language and, a, and, and an understanding and a compassion for the process of being an actor, right? Yeah. And, and really understanding that for me, the key question that, that I ask actors when I, when I first start working with them is, how do you want to be directed? Mm. How do you like to be directed, right? Because I'm interested in getting a performance, right? I'm not interested in being, um, this is how I like to direct. This is my ego and I'm here and this is who I am. That's, that's not going to get me anywhere, right? No, no, I mean, I... <laughs> right. I, I, I want a performance, you know, I want a performance, which means that I need to, I need to win somebody's trust. Um, and I need to know how to talk to people, right. In order to get, in order to get what I want, you know. It is funny. I was talking with another actor who's also a teacher and, you know, she was talking about, you know, a lot of times when you go into an audition, they might give you a correction or they might give you a note, which is a great thing to have as an actor um, in any audition, in any room, um, getting any sort of feedback. But a lot of times that feedback comes from a place of, uh, it, it's very vague. It, it, it doesn't make sense. You don't know where it's coming from. And you know, we were talking about, okay, what happens when you're in that situation? What if you get this note that makes no sense to you about what the character is or what's on the page or, or, or something, you know, um, I was in a class recently and we were doing mock auditions, um, for, for the, 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 that this one person was, was going for. And we, each had like a role. It was, we were all like the producers and executives in this audition watching this actress, you know, you know, spit some sides. And she, the, the teacher gave uh, another person in the, in the class. That's like a, like a, like a prompt, like, okay, in the middle of this, I'm going to stop them. And I'm going to ask if the, any of the, anybody else has any feedback. And mm -hmm. I want you to say something that makes no sense about what they're doing and see what they do and how they react and you know it throws you off guard but i think it was a great way to kind of demonstrate of hey you don't know what these these people are going to see or what 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 other aspect of their life that they're trying to convey through your work yeah yeah so um it, it's a weird world <laughs> it is a, it, it is a weird world but it's such a it's such a beautiful world too i mean i think for me for me the most important thing is is um just just being respectful right like i there's a particular way that i want to carry myself um and that that really matters to me right there's it's, there's an ethical component to it um and you know i'm 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 in this because i think that storytelling is incredibly important and very like a very noble sort of human pursuit um and and i'm I, and that means that i you know i mean I, I i take it seriously i take language seriously i take the process of of telling stories through movement seriously you know um and and this kind of mis, um, miscommunications or lack of understanding are bound to happen that's the, it's kind of a it, you know it's an integral part of communication um but how it happens right and like what what's getting in the way of of communicating if if your ego is what's getting in the way of communicating that's a problem right but if what's getting in the way of communicating is like insufficient understanding or like you're getting to know the other, how the other person communicates. That's okay. That's a process. That's an opening, you know? And we, we can go all day talking about egos, but you know, I'm not yeah. saying anything bad about anybody in the industry because I know it all comes from, <laughs> so from different places. Um, 
Can you talk a little bit about your experience with Sundance Film Festival and what you're doing with them? Yeah, yeah. Um, so I have a fellowship through, through Sundance. It's the Sundance Knight Foundation um, Fellowship, which in my, my case, it's for the development of a feature film based on a screenplay that I wrote. And um, I got my fellowship in 2018. So uh, part of the fellowship was going to the festival, the 2018 Sundance uh, Film Festival. And um, I mean, going to the festival was amazing. It was extremely overwhelming. Um, you know, there's, it's, it's, there, there's a lot of reasons why it's overwhelming, right? I mean, for me personally, I, I, you know, I'm a working class person. And so I kind of go into these spaces and I'm like, uh, <laughs> do I, do I fit in here? You know, like, am I, am I like allowed to be here? You know, and there's, there's a lot of wealth around and, um, that is, it's its own thing, <laughs> you know, it's its own energy that I'm not, that I'm just not like, 100% comfortable or familiar with, right? And then there is this incredible sort of, um, this wonderful energy of meeting a lot of uh, like-minded people who are excited about the same thing that you're excited about, you know? Um, and it's, it, right? I mean, it's, and it, and it's also attracts a lot of people who are not the best, the best people who are not bringing forth their best selves, right? This is just the nature of the entertainment industry. Um, but I, I mean, for me, that the, the experience that I, I take away from it is that I got to meet a lot of really wonderful people. Um, I especially got to, to form some pretty deep relationships with people, um, with other indigenous people in the film industry. Um, and it's very inspiring to, to see that, that world of indigenous filmmaking blossom, right? And the kind of, um, the sort of important bridges that are being built in, in between like the, the Latinx filmmaking world and the indigenous filmmaking world and understanding that there's this, um, there's this common sort of history there that's, that's important. Um, and Sundance does, you know, Sundance does a lot of work in, in, in investing in the development of, um, uh, you know, in, in, in fostering the development of voices of people who are not normally heard in the film industry, right? Mm -hmm. um, so that, all, all of that is great. And it's, it's amazing, of course, to have the support of Sundance in these projects. Um, I, I did not go to film school, so I wrote a screenplay um, and that's okay if you don't go to film school. Yeah, <laughs> I think okay. it's, I think it's, I, th I definitely think it's okay. The, the, the issue with not going to film school is that you don't have contacts, right? So you sort of just like, I'm here, <laughs> you know? Um, but so, I mean, for me, it was kind of, it was, it was a strange process, right? Where I, I didn't go to film school, but I had always wanted to be, you know, ever since I was a child, this, you know, this being a director was sort of my dream. And um, I, and then one day I just decided, well, I'm going to write, I had this idea for a screenplay and I wrote that screenplay. Um, and it was the first, the first screenplay that I wrote. I, I taught myself how to write um, by reading another screenplay so that I read this screenplay for eternal sunshine of the spotless mind. Mm. Um, and I realized that there was a kind of that there was a format, right? That there was this way <laughs> that screenplays have rules, right? Um, and I sort of deduced what some of those rules were. I'm still learning a lot, you know, from reading that screenplay. And then I wrote this, um, this script. And, and then I was like, oh, I don't know. I don't know what to do with this. Um, and I was like, well, I, I like Sundance. They're doing interesting things. And, um, I was like, well, I guess I'll just send it to Sundance. And I sent it to Sundance and I got rejected. And then, and I was like, well, I still don't know what to do, <laughs> what to do with this. And then I sent it to them again, right? Um, and then I, uh, it, was, it was on a third attempt where I got my, um, 
where I got my, my uh, fellowship. Yeah. And that, you know, that process was, it was amazing. You know, it was eye opening and it has, you know, it has, the script has really changed too, right? From the original sort of, um, the story is the same, right? The arc of the story is the same, but the ways and it's an action film. So I've learned a lot about how to write action, how to communicate that. Um, and, and all of that has been really amazing. Now that always happens where, where a script gets written and then it completely changes through several different iterations throughout the process of making the film. Yeah. Like, you know, uh, you know, you always hear stories about how one character got cut, another one got added, or this person's monologue got changed to a whole different scene, or, you know, there's all sorts of stories that you hear in the industry. Um, I, I, I want to touch on one thing that you said when, when you first, uh, well, two things, that, sh yeah, sure, you were, you, you, walking into these uh, Sundance, um, you know, groups of people and you had that feeling of, you know, not fitting in. And I, I'm, I'm sure with your background that you felt that a lot. Um, but I felt that everybody in that room, no matter how much money that they have or don't have also feel that way. Um, sure. And I think, I, and I really do think that the entertainment industry is just a melting pot of misfits. Mm -hmm. um, some have a lot more money than others. Um, and, so, you know, um, and, 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 and for me, especially, you know, I was talking about this with another, uh, in another podcast, everybody gets scared. You know, that's, I think that's the one thing that I really learned going into it is, at every step of the process, everybody has some sort of fear about it. And yeah. I, That's good. I, I loved it. I loved it. It made everything at a level playing field for me. Um, another thing you said um, was about, um, sure, cha changing the script and everything, but what was it like getting rejected twice and having it, um, you know, come back the third time. Was that something that they always do? Like, did you talk to other people in your fellowship and they would be like, oh yeah, I submitted five times and I finally got it or, you know? Yeah. So, so my yeah. understanding is that the average rate of rejection for Sundance is seven. So seven attempts. Hmm. Um, and I, I, you know, I guess, for me, it was this thing where I was, I, I was developing, you're, you're develop, you, you can't just pursue one thing, right? Like you have to develop your career from, from, from different angles. Right. Um, and I was doing work, um, at the time in music videos. So I was still, I, you know, I, I, I was making things and that, that was, important to me um but the you know the rejection is a, a rejection just means um that that person isn't the right person to work with you that's yeah. that's what it means right yeah. and sundance has a particular brand of um of story that they tell you know nobody likes to hear that but it's true you know it's true of everybody um and We're it's, it's funny because the, uh, of the people um, in the industry who have read the, the screenplay, they're all like, <laughs> how did you get a fellowship at Sundance? Because <laughs> it's not, it's just not a Sundance type film, right? It, but those, those are also misconceptions that people have, right? It's just, it's, it's, it's a tricky kind of it's a tricky kind of situation where we try to put things into boxes and it's not, it's, it's not a good idea, you know? Um, but ultimately rejection is, um, look, rejection is hard, right? Yeah. I, I, it, I get rejected all the time, right? I, I, most of my experience is the experience of rejection, you know? Um, and you just kind of have to, keep you just kind of have to keep going that's the process you know like that that you have to keep you have to keep chasing it because you're um and and then you have to just do 
you have to be bold and you have to do what you can on your own. Right. So, um, sometimes the, the, the thing, the number one thing that, that has become very evident to me, uh, about the, about the way that the film industry works is that people will not join you on, on a static train, right? Like they, the, the train has to be moving and it has to, and it has to be moving fast. The speed at which it's moving is it, it de- like that depends on who's going to join you, right? Very early on, those, those people who join you very early on, those, those are your pals, right? Those are the people who, who are there, are really, really there for you and there for your ideas. And, and I'm very blessed in that regard, you know, to have like one of my best friends is a cinematographer and, um, and, and he's been there from, from moment one, you know? Um, but other people won't join you, you know, for a better analogy, they're, they're not going to come into the room until the party's really going right. Until it feels like it, it, it's worth it to them. It's a business, you know? Um, and that, that creates a, that, that's its own kind of game, right. Where you, you're trying to, um, you're trying to get people to, to, to sign on to the project, you know, and, and, and all of that. But it, but it, it just, it happens mysteriously, you know? I mean, people ask me sometimes, like, what is, like, what is the path to, to getting a, a fellowship at Sundance? I have no idea. You know, Sundance rejects me all of the time. You know, I, you know, I, they, they, they rejected me in the beginning. I got my fellowship. I applied to other fellowships. I got rejected. <laughs> you know, there is, I don't have any answers, right? It's very mysterious. Um, but you just, you can't, I, I personally can't really worry about that. The only thing that I worry about is, is doing the work, right. And finding, um, just finding opportunity, creating, creating opportunities to make work. That's, that's my, that's my thing. Do you have a North star of where you want to go and what you want to make? Um, Oh, that's kind of a strange question. <laughs> I know it's a strange question, but but I I find that it you know this question um, either goes two ways. It's either yeah I have a specific goal, a specific role, a specific movie I want to make, or it goes yeah. I'm just taking whatever I get. You know, you yeah. know, either one of those two. And it's like I have this one good thing going right now. I'm going to see it through, and then I'm going to go find another one. You know, so yeah. I, I mean, I, I want to work as, um, as a director, as a director and as a screenwriter. I mean, my, my aim is to write movies and to make them. Um, and, uh, that, you know, that's, that's the, that's kind of the process that that's, that's where I'm at. Right. I mean, I definitely, I would absolutely love, uh, to direct like, you know, a movie that cost $160 million. That sounds great. You know, I, I wouldn't say no to that opportunity. Right. Um, as long as you got but, a portion of that hundred, and, <laughs> you know, it's not even about that. I just want to walk <laughs> onto that set. That's, that's, that's what happens to me. I'm just like, that, that I want to, I want to just be on that set and, and, yeah. and, you know, experience that, that level of, um, production yeah in that production (laughs) but for me the important thing is 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 about telling stories through film you know um and that that that's what i want to do that's what i want that that's what i want to do for the rest of my life and and the reason that um the reason that i that i pursue the arts is because it makes me feel alive, right? I, I, it makes me feel like I'm always playing, you know? Like I have no desire to grow up and be a responsible adult, you know? I wanna create worlds, I wanna tell stories, I wanna hang out with people who, who wanna do the same thing, you know, who have that kind of, that sense of, of being wild and being present mm-hmm. um, in that desire. That's, that's what I want, you know? And sometimes that is, a um you know a music video that i'm shooting on my phone you know and sometimes it's it's a big production right i i love the 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 creation of it right i mean i also love theater 
right? I, I adore theater. And, and it's the same thing with theater, right? Like I absolutely love a big, you know, to, I would love to be a part of a big Broadway production, you know, but I also absolutely love, you know, um, street theater, the theater of the oppressed, like, like going out there and just doing, doing work and being around people who have that same, that same desire. Mm, that's beautiful. Yeah. Now, um, even though you do have these great opportunities and, and you've seen a lot, um, and, and you're willing to go through the long tail of it. You know, I always ask people a couple of specific questions. What is, um, is, is there something in the industry that you wish you could, um, see change or, or, or something that you could, um, speak to that, that, you know, like for me, for example, I've, I've seen a lot of guests and they say, Oh, I really hate the whole casting process and the whole auditioning and how, how much, how fickle that could be. Um, is there anything in the industry that you feel as if you would like to be a change in? Yeah. Yeah. There's two, there's two big things that I think that, that I would like to see a change in. Um, I, I would like for the, um, you know, the, the violence against the sexual violence against women mm. to just completely cease. This is not a thing that is acceptable. It never was acceptable. Um, and, and you're just talking about just, in general, not just in the in entertainment. I'm, I'm talking about in general, but I'm specifically yeah. referring to the, to the, to the film industry. Right. right? Um, it's, uh, it's completely unacceptable, right? And the different, the ways, uh, the different way in which women are treated, um, that it, it has to stop, yeah. right? It has to stop immediately. Um, and then, you know, tied into that same, that same thought, uh, one of the things that I, that I, that I, I, I don't like, right. That I sort of rebel against is this notion that, you know, so, so I'm a, I'm a person of color, I'm an immigrant, you know, I, I, I have, a, a, I'm of indigenous descent. I have, I have these, these identities that are, um, that are intertwined and that are, that are othered. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, and I, I feel like I get put into this, you know, and I'm, I'm a woman and, all these things and I get put into this place of like, tell right. your story, tell us your story. And it's like, I don't want to <laughs> tell you my story. I'm not, you know, I'm not writing an autobiography. You know what I mean? I want to, I want to write, you know, kick ass, incredible, complex screenplays and make movies that match that. That's what I want. You know, I don't, I, it, there's this thing that happens with people who are, you know, who are othered, who are like, who are oppressed, where we have to sort of confess all of our sorrow so that, that we can be taken seriously. Here is my sorrowful film of feeling alienated. You know, it's like, I write action films, you know, um, and, 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 and I'm good at it. And that's why I, I, you know, um, rising in the industry. That's why I'm doing this work because I'm good at it. Right. Yeah. Not, not because I need to enter into this confessional state of, of, um, it, just like this, it's, 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 it's like an apology. Right. And I don't, I'm, I'm not, I'm not interested in that. Right. This, there's this, this, well, this, this is a woman's film, right? Mm. This, this is an indigenous film. This is this film. And it's like, I, I don't know. It's this constant like reification of this caste system um, that I'm not, I'm not interested in, you know, I'm, and, I'm, I do what I do because I'm good at it, you know? And it's very strange that even though we, uh, as, as an audience member, we always love hearing those stories, those stories of struggle, those stories of, you know, oppression and, you know, a different perspective. It's very funny that we love to watch that. Um, but at the same time, there's less and less being done about it in certain circumstances. It's almost like um, building up a higher wall to to separate those kind of stories. 
you know? Yeah, I, I think, I, I guess for me, the thing that I, I grew up um, in a very sort of multicultural space, you know, within, within my household and, um, and within my community and, and understanding that like, there, there are good stories. There are good stories all over, right? And that I owe a lot of debt in my development as a human being to these good stories that people all over the world have, have created, you know? Um, and that, and, and I, and I want to think of, I, I understand obviously like racial oppression exists, gendered oppression exists, ableism exists. These things are real. Right. Um, and and it's important to address them, right? It's important to address power. What I don't want is to sort of be forced into this kind of like space of a caricature, right? Where, where, where a certain sort of sto storytelling is what is expected of me, right? And there's a limit set to the, to the, the types of stories that, that I can tell or the kind of work that I can do, you know? That's what I don't want. And I don't want that for anybody. Yeah. And you also touched on the, um, you know, objectification of, uh, and, you know, the, the, the sexual abuse against women in the entertainment industry. And, you know, being a SAG member, I'm sure you've, you've, you've heard a lot about intimacy coordinators. I'm sure you've heard a lot about steps being done um, for, in order for people, uh, you know, it doesn't matter the gender to feel comfortable in certain situations. Um, have, sure. have, have you seen any of that on, 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 on set? Like, have, have you seen any of that be going on? Like, yeah, yeah. So let's, let's, let's rewind a little bit. Okay, I'm ahead. not, I'm, yeah. <laughs> um, so I, I haven't joined SAG yet. Oh. I'm SAG eligible. Um, oh. I, I actually, I, 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 Hmm, maybe this shouldn't go on the podcast. Yeah, don't worry about it. <laughs> but I'll just tell you now that like I um I I became I was able to join like I became SAG eligible right before the pandemic started. Uh, and 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 I was like and the initiation fee is three thousand dollars nationwide right. yeah. plus your dues. And I knew the UN had already shut down and I knew the film industry was going to shut down like in two days. And I was like, I, I, I can't, I don't know. I, I can't give you $3,000 right now, you know? Um, so I'm, I'm like in this weird like limbo space of waiting for the industry to reopen so that I can, you know, be like, I, okay, now I have guaranteed income. Like I know I can get these gigs. So, you know, mm -hmm um but it'll happen it'll happen for you i'm i'm i yeah yeah yeah, uh, be, yeah yeah of course right i mean there's this worldwide crisis going on right now it's not you know yeah. I mean, this is this is not about me but it's, yeah. <laughs> it's right here we here we all are um but i mean i think like speaking to like 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 just addressing this thing that you're talking about right in relationship to um, I, I think that the core, the core of what we're talking about here is doing things with intention, right? Mm -hmm. um, and that, that's, that's the most important thing, right? Like there is this, the, that, that's what separates um, like amateur bullshit from, from a professional environment, right? Mm -hmm. Where you, um, you, you do things with attention and with intention, right? So if you, if you coordinate a fight scene, and you have a bunch of people who don't know what they're doing, right? You're, you're putting people in danger, yeah. you know? It's a dangerous thing to do. Um, and, and, and the same is true is it, to not approach scenes of intimacy, um, scenes that deal with sexuality, with the same sort of attention and intention, you know? Um, and that, that, that is a sort of like a, 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 critical, a critical thing, both in writing it, right? And how you write it and how you conceive of these characters, you know, and how you conceive of these, of these moments of these exchanges of these experiences, and then how that unfolds on set, mm -hmm. right? So I, um, in my, the, the proof of concept uh, f f short film that I shot in, in um, the Paiute reservation to, uh, 
it, it serves as a proof of concept to get to gather funds for the feature for the Sundance film. Um, there's, you know, the actors, the actors show up the, the day before the shoot and then they have to, then they're on set the next morning and they've never met and they are playing like lovers, yeah. you know? And, um, and that, and they're, they're, they're pros, you know, they, they're pros. And it was very, for me, it was really wonderful to, um, to work with, um, I worked with Elizabeth Francis and Sam Mara, and it was just really, really great to be able to have very, to just to be able to very quickly go into that in-depth space of talking about how we were going to, um, image this intimacy between these two these two people you know um and and sort of uh, having frank conversations right about okay well this 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 is what i'm envisioning does how, how does that feel you know um and that i think that's that's a critical part of the work you know that's a critical i actually really love that that part of the work you know collaboration that 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 everyone coming to the table and coming to a consensus of what's going to happen and the expectations around that absolutely yeah. absolutely yeah. and i mean i think that the same thing is very important in class right like i i you know um i've had a lot of different scene partners right and i've had scene partners um and you know this this is another thing that's it's a bit it's it's kind of like I dread it a little bit, right? But because I'm I'm uh, I'm a woman, I often get scenes that are like, I'm somebody's girlfriend or I'm somebody's wife, you know. My like my relationship to the world is always defined by that relationship that I have to a man, you know. Um, and 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 then I get paired with a lot of different people, right? And and there, there's this this difference that happens. Like I've I've had. Um, scene partners who I think are really wonderful, who write, you know, as we're getting ready are like, okay, well, is, is it okay if I put, put my hand on your waist or I'm thinking that I'm going to have my arm around you, right? And there's this very intentional conversation about how we're going to interact Mm -hmm. in this scene you know and then there's other people who are just like hey babe <laughs> <You know? laughs> this is a professional setting this is a professional setting you yeah. know yeah. and we can have this conversation we can talk about you know because the way that a character moves in space is acting right this is like an intentional act yeah. right the way that you the way that you touch me as a character is an intentional act. It's not just like, this is how men and women touch each other. <laughs> so, because there's only sense. one way to do it, right? <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and talking about that, you know, a lot of times I've, I've had scene partners um, and, you know, many different scene partners in the same scene, you know, people getting switched out all the time. Um, and there have been times where I don't know what to do. Mm. It, you know, it, there, maybe there hasn't been that moment beforehand and be like, hey, I know that we're having the scene, you know, what is okay for, you know, it, and, and a lot of times you kind of have to just feel it out. Just like when you're meeting somebody for the first time, like, oh yeah, I can, I can give them a hug or a fist bump or you know, like, well, what's the, like, what's the, what's the separation and what's okay and what's not okay. And a lot of times, you know, you get stuff wrong, you know? Yeah. And so to your point, I do think that there needs to be a certain level of, all right, we need a second here just to lay ground rules, just like any relationship, mm -hmm. especially if you're conveying a deeper relationship in a scene. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I think, I don't, I, you know, the, that actors, are always given it's it's kind of just an understanding like this first moment right that first moment where you're just like getting into character right that's that's a pretty standard thing in that first moment it should be folded into this thing about like i'm going to talk to my scene partner you know yeah. um there's nothing that, that there that i i i think that you can always say um Hey, let, let me ask you a couple questions really quickly. There's no reason, there's no, there's no version of the story in which that isn't possible. Right? Especially when you're on set. Especially when 100%. you're there right about to do the work. 
uh, yes, when you're on set, when you're in rehearsal, when you're Anytime. in class, there is that there is no time when 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 you don't when you don't have time mm -hmm. to ask that question, to connect with that person, to understand. And what it does is it makes the performance better, right? It makes the performance sing. It may, because you're at ease, right? Um, and that you're 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 gonna get out of your own way. You're gonna you're not gonna be wondering like oh, what's this guy gonna do or like what blah blah blah, you know um and yeah. Yeah. and that you know to me that to me that's really important and so i i've been um i've been really lucky to to work with people who who understand that and and who take that seriously and who have um and 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 who have really like like showed me the 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 importance of that right like through it's through doing that you learn ah oh, this is something that i really i really want to have happen on set that i want to have be a part of how I, how I am as a director and how I am as an actor, you know? Yeah. And yeah, there, there's a lot there that needs to be done uh, for sure. To your point. Um, another question I always ask is, you know, we talked about a lot of advice and a lot of things that you love, but what is one thing in this? I think you touched a little bit about it when you were talking about the, the connections and the friends that you make. What is one thing that you just can't get out of any kind of other job except for filmmaking? Like what, 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 what's the one thing you love? Oh my God, everything. <laughs> I, I don't, um, I don't know of any other job that is mm -hmm. as, as fun and as, um, as interesting and as complex and, collaborative as filmmaking right I mean especially for me in in terms of um sort of being involved in in a lot of different aspects of it it's mm -hmm. it's just a very it's a very in-depth process right like it's a very you, you know as as a writer I get to spend a lot of time um thinking about about different worlds and different people and 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 what motivates them and understanding character in that way you know the work of a director is is super exciting right there is this relationship that you have with other people and then there's the the work of sort of like envisioning the whole project you know um and and that you are you are world building which is something that i really love um and then the work of like you know working as an actor is to me, that's like such an incredible privilege, similar, similar to writing in the sense that you have, um, you have a real responsibility to hold on to something that doesn't belong to you mm. and, to, and, and to do it with honesty, you know, to pursue a kind of truth about a feeling that isn't yours, you know, um, and, and that, I, I don't know any anything else in the world that is as wonderful as as the the, the world of of making films or, or or working in theater. You know, I I I can't think of anything. You know, I mean, and interrelated um, with with other art forms, sure. You know, like dance, for example, I think is a space that um, for me has been very very fruitful in learning about everything right it's all interconnected and um You're preaching i just love the process i love yeah you know about you know about it you know yeah, yeah I, I know all too well I, I i in fact i like to tell people um many of the lessons that i've learned going into the in entertainment industry i learned as a dancer you yeah. know I, I learned the importance of showing up on time working how to work with your 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 um other people not just on set but you know on stage in the studio in rehearsals um things to say things not to say how to say things how to ask questions how to you know when to speak up and when to just shut up you know certain things or you know e even in like an audition like i i had hundreds of auditions before i started acting and i think especially with, with all my actor friends who are listening, you know, auditions are kind of the bane of our existence. It is like yeah. the bedrock of what we do. And yet so many of us just hate it. We just, we just want to work. But um, 
Yeah. Yeah. I, I, uh, you know, going back to what you were talking about, about rejection, you know, that was one thing I learned. Okay. You're going to hear a thousand no's before one. Yes. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, now I, I know we talked a lot about, you know, some advice and I'm always, you know, eager to, to give advice and to give wisdom and to, you know, um, paint expectations um, or, 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 or not, not give too much expectation, but, but realities and logic walking into the entertainment industry. Is there a few nuggets or one nugget of advice that you would like to give like your students or a younger you or what would you like to give? I, I mean, I think the most important thing is that you have to create your own opportunities, hmm. right? You, you can't wait. Uh, you can't wait around for people to, to discover you, to notice that you're an incredible writer, director, actor, like <laughs> it's not going to happen, right? You have to make, um, you have to do the work, right? So, and, 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 you know, and if you, if you, if you're an actor and you can't write, then go make some friends who can write, right? Um, like that's, that, that's, it's, it's critically important to, um, to create your own content, your own work. To, like I think that that's the most important um, the most important advice that I can give myself and to anyone is to just make things mm -hmm. always be making things you know um, because that's why you're doing it right you're doing it because you want to make things <laughs> that so make them you know just make the creative them. process you know this is why you're here yeah yeah I really I really wonder about you know, those stories in which people get discovered. Yeah. You know, was it really a discovery or was it like you were doing something and somebody saw, like, how was that a discover? Like, who's discovering who? Like, sure. What is that story? You know, I always question that. Anyway. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's great. That's great. Uh, so how can people reach you? Um, contact you. Oh my gosh, I'm on the spot. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm I'm I I'm on um, Instagram, and my handle on Instagram is b e underscore slings and arrows. Yes, I believe, that and I'm it. sure you can type it up on there for me. Thank you <laughs> when you produce this. Um, and do you and a, do you have a and website? I do have a website, yeah, and it's um, Bettina uh, dash Escaurisa dot com, uh, which you the link is on my Instagram too. Um, so that's those are the best ways to reach me and see what I'm up to. Good, good. All right, Bettina. Well, um, stay safe, be well, stay Thank healthy you. in this great, great opportunity that we have in order to kind of reassess and uh hopefully when else is done we'll go get coffee or lunch or something absolutely we'll make some work yes that's the best let's, thing we can do let's get on set let's make something absolutely uh thank you so much cameron it was so fun talking to you and i will i'll see you soon hey everybody thanks so much for listening to the podcast check out my instagram at cam underscore a underscore b also, if you want to learn a little bit more about me and see what I'm all about, check out CameronAB.com. Thanks so much for listening and have a great day.